The little guy's starting to wake up. It's time to go get him. My last day at home before getting back on the road. We've gotten a lot done this week, and there's still a lot more to do. I could have done with another couple of weeks off, probably just to get stuff done. It seems that for every one thing you get done, another one pops up, right? So eventually you gotta be like, okay, we got all the important things done. Old Blue is gonna be ready for the road by tomorrow. It's time to go. Eventually you just gotta say, it's, it's time to go back to work. So I'm just getting my breakfast started here right now. I'm going to go get our little boy, get him ready for the day, feed him, change him. And then I'll probably go and meet our renters who are returning our camper today. Go over that, make sure everything went well. Uh, park that back in storage. Get ready for the next renters, which are coming, I think, in two weeks. So the next weekend is still available. But I don't know, that might fill up soon, who knows. Got a few things to do today yet. Hey. Morning. Morning. You sleep good? Ready for another day? It's raining! And I'm doing tax stuff! Hooray! Getting all my GST together, gotta file it so that I can get some money back because they shouldn't have taken it in the first place. And I'm also transferring vlogs from my computer to my external hard drive. I keep all of my vlogs on an external hard drive just in case, you know? I keep it in multiple locations so that I always have records. I have records of all of them going all the way back to the beginning. So there's over 3,000 videos. And I'm here. I got the truck ready. I'm ready to go. But so far, there's no freight. So I'm taking this opportunity to get some work done on the computer, uh, get some work done on the vlogs, probably organize a little bit more in here because look at this place. I always say that every time. I'm like, oh, Trucker Josh is gonna organize, sure he is. I swear. One of these days. Remember, all of this stuff is gonna go into our new house once we buy a new house. So that's just temporary, okay? Temporary. And I have the go-ahead from my wife to throw out these balloons now. We wanted to keep them. Uh, they're from the baby shower, right? She wanted to keep them, but they're actually pretty cheap. You can get them at Canadian Tire. And they're taking up a lot of space here. And I have a lot of balloons in my shop. I am the balloon man. So I have the go-ahead from her. It's actually her idea that I can just throw them out. So there's that. Um, we got the camper in right here. It's all ready to go for the next renters already. We got old blue out there. Ready to go. Unfortunately, the polish was destroyed on the truck. I, I'm kind of, I'm very sad to report. The polish is destroyed. And it's my fault. I accepted the load going up there and I don't regret it. It was a good experience going up there. I got to pull the RGN trailer up there. It was my choice. It, was, it paid good. I got back. Like I said, there's dollar signs at the end of that road and I went for them. I got them. They're mine. They're mine now, but Old Blue definitely took a beating going up there. I don't want her to go up there again. Uh, I don't want the truck up there again. Uh, that's just, it's too brutal. Even in wintertime, because in wintertime the uh, the roads are better because they're filled in with snow and ice, right? But at the same time, 
if it snows there, like the last time we went up there in wintertime, we were pushing snow with our bumper. There's like three feet of snow on the road. And that was also very hard on the truck then too. So I've definitely made the decision that old blue doesn't go up there anymore. But I mean, everybody has their price, right? So I should never say never. Speak to me in my language of dollar signs and we'll talk. But there better be a lot of dollar signs, okay? And a couple of extra ones after that and throw in a few more for good measure. Okay, I have my price. But uh, this last trip up to Gillum there, uh, I didn't make too much because I made good money, don't get me wrong. I made good money going up there, but I lost the money having to stay home and do repairs on the truck and fix the truck. Some of the wiring had uh, ripped up in the frame under the fifth wheel. And nothing too important or big. Uh, it ha hadn't actually ripped off, but all the protective covering had ripped off. The zip ties had ripped off, so the wires were dangling all over the place. Oh, wait, no, no, there was some wires that ripped off, yes. Yeah, sensors and stuff. Uh, I had to fix that. So it was nothing big. It's not like a wheel fell off or like the engine blew up or something. So it, it was minor minor i could fix it but my polish is completely destroyed and my rims they're gonna have to be cut before they get polished next time that means they're gonna have to go in there and sand it sand it smooth again because those rocks they dug like the puck marks all around inside my rims all of them even my headache rack from the rocks being thrown back at it very disappointing because uh the guy who polishes it bill he did a great job Great job, and it's not cheap to get it polished anyway. He has really good prices. I got a really good price for him. Can't complain about that at all. But it, it's still, it's money that uh, I feel, uh, maybe I should have protected that a little bit more. But you can look back in life and say, whoops, that was a mistake, or maybe it was worth it. But it won't be worth it for me to do that again. And my tanks, like my fuel tanks are supposed to be polished. I, they're just stained now. So I'm gonna go down, so I, I requested a load south if they have anything. Who am I to request, right? I go where the loads go, but I, I said, if you have anything south, please. I need to go through Fargo. I need to go to a North Star truck wash or a Blue Beacon. I might have to get the truck acid washed. I don't know. I'm gonna go in there, I'll be like, okay, underneath all of this grime is polished aluminum. And it was shiny before all of this grime got on here. So do what you can to bring that shine back, get this grime off of there. I'm hoping they can do that without acid washing the actual aluminum, because then you gotta get it repolished. So that's my day. A little disappointing. It's raining though. We had a, we had a beautiful week while I was at home. Uh, beautiful, sunshiny, warm, hot week. Uh, the renters who had our camper uh, brought it back. They took excellent care of it. It was a really good first experience. Um, they really enjoyed it too. They had a good time all around. Amazing 100% first experience. We gave them a five star review as renters. So now I just gotta wait for a load to come in. They said maybe this afternoon. And in the meantime, we can get some more things done in here. There's always, always something to do, always. Especially after you have a kid. I mean, you thought, you, you, you think you're busy now. If you haven't had a kid yet, <laughs> people used to tell me this all the time. They're not lying. You think you're busy. Wait till you have a kid. It is so hard to get everything done that you need to get done. And that's not complaining. A kid is the greatest thing ever in the world, little Theo. Oh, I miss him and I'm not even that far away from him. He's still sleeping at home right now. Ah, it's, it's, it's amazing. But uh, when you have a lot of things to get done, a lot of them just aren't gonna get done. <laughs> and that's okay. You gotta, you gotta get, get to that point in your head where you're like, that's okay. That's okay. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to get to that. I'm not quite there yet because my brain still spins sometimes. Like, I have so much things to do. I start getting anxiety and stuff. But I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. So now is my time to catch up on a few things. Uh, I thought I'd be on the road already. Turns out, not quite yet. I got a couple of hours, so let's not waste it. As expected, or as to be expected, they picked up a few bugs on the road. That's not bad. They pulled it uh, about 250 kilometers or two and a half hours from here, just over into Ontario. And uh, I'll just wipe off those bugs. I'll get some bull snot on there. We'll get this thing all cleaned up for the next renters. The whole trailer's ready aside from this front piece here. I've got to uh, 
I've gotta wipe that down yet. We don't have any renters for this coming weekend yet, but the next weekend it's rented out. It's going uh, south from here, not into the US, it's going south from here. And if you're wondering, Trucker Josh, how is the, uh, the new rental business going? Like I, like I said before, our first rental, our first renters were amazing. It's going really well. And we have, uh, we have it booked out again uh, in uh, two weekends from now. And we started halfway through the season. We've had a lot of interest, a lot of people uh, messaging, seeing if they can rent it out. Maybe by the time this video airs, maybe it'll be rented and booked straight out to the end of September. Uh, or even the end of October. We're renting it until the end of October and that's when we're cutting it off. Uh, by November 1st, this trailer has to be in the shop here. It doesn't have to be winterized because it's going to be warm. Uh, which is awesome, right? We can keep it in here, keep it warm through the winter. But, uh... It depends though. The right renters, I mean, if, if they want to take it south to Florida for a month or something during the winter, well, it's always negotiable. Always negotiable. Like I said earlier, you speak my language. We're talking dollar signs. Do you want it for a month? You want to go to Florida with it in wintertime? I don't see why not. Let's talk. We we'll negotiate. I can't promise. Let's see what kind of people you are first. <laughs> but uh, I've had it in Florida before. I've had it in California before. Uh, it's a good trailer. Sleeps four. Oh, just as I was talking to you about this, we had another booking come in. Uh, so it'll be booked out this weekend as well and the following weekend. Good, they're coming in quick. Right on. Makes me kind of excited. Maybe it will work to have a couple more of these next year, because I, I tell you, if we had eight of these campers last year, they would have all been booked out over August long, all of them. It's just, I don't know if we can keep eight busy every weekend, but so far this thing's been busy every weekend since we've had it on the market as a rental. Every weekend, just bang, 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 bookings coming in. And it, it, it makes sense because like I said before, why buy one of these? I already bought one, all right? And I don't use it. <laughs> I don't use it. So, oh, there's another one. We're not using it that much. So we decided to turn it into a business instead and rent it out to people. That way you don't have to, because you buy one of these, it sits in storage most of the time, doesn't it? Doesn't it make sense just to, to rent one instead? I mean, makes sense to me. If I wouldn't already own this one, I would have probably just rented now that I know this is a thing. But uh, now that I know this is a thing, I might buy another couple of these and <laughs> get a couple of different models, you know? We had this four person, four sleeper, four person uh, camper. I'd like to get at least a six person or an eight person just for a bigger family and a fifth wheel. Fifth wheel might just be delivered, but we'll see, I don't know. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves for now. Uh, I'm just happy that this thing is being kept busy this season. And I'm all ready to leave on a trip. Trailer here is all ready to go out. I guess we're gonna have to come up with a name for this trailer, eh? Other than Rockwood 2304 DS. <laughs> I've got with a name. Maybe you guys can give us some uh, good name ideas for our, our first rental trailer. So I've got this angled towards the door here so that uh, they can easily pull out, right? I want to make it a little easier on them. Britt's gonna be here, I'm gonna be on the road. So it's all ready, it's cleaned, it's stocked. All bedding and linens are included in there. They had requested that. It's got RV toilet paper. All the tanks have been dumped, they're empty, including the fresh water tank. They wanted to fill that when they get to where they're going uh, so that they don't have to haul that extra weight. It's a 60 gallon fresh water tank. So it holds six, 500 pounds of water. It's an extra 500 pounds you gotta pull down the highway and burn fuel for no reason, right? They can, they decided they wanted to fuel it, or I fill it up with water down there, which makes a whole lot of sense to me. Now we just wanted to make sure that the fridge is on. That's why it's plugged in, right? Just want to hear the fridge turn on here. It doesn't run constantly, but it does turn on periodically. So I was just going to come here and wait for it to turn on. We do that so that the fridge is cold when they pick it up and they can put their food that they bought right into the fridge right away and it won't go bad. It takes 24 hours to cool this fridge all the way down to uh, where it needs to be. And the freezer's a little bit quicker, but we like to have it cold for them when they pick it up. 
So I plugged it in, I turned it on, I'm just waiting for it to kick on now. It probably was running for a while already, and then turned off. So now I gotta wait for it to kick back on, just to make sure it's running. Then we can leave on a trip, we can get to some trucking! The kind of stuff you guys are used to seeing me do. Not this stuff, this is my other stuff that we do on the side. Well actually, Britt takes care of it, so. Behind the scenes of Trucker Josh, now in front of the scenes. Now on scene. Oh, come on now, kick on. Come on. You can hear old blue running out there already, right? It is ready to go. I need to go pick up that trailer. It's supposed to be there before 1 a.m., so I have plenty of time. I didn't want to get there so late. I wanted to get to a parking spot somewhere and go to sleep and be sleeping by 1 a.m. Wait, what's going on here? Is the fridge going to turn on or what? It must be cold already. I went to go turn Old Blue off because she's got a little... The truck's got a little bit of a rumble and sometimes it over, it's overbearing, can't hear anything else. Which I'm okay with. <laughs> but right now I need to hear that this fridge is running before I leave. I'm going here and open it up a bit. Make sure that it's on. <laughs> What's going on in here? Fridge isn't turning on. <sighs> Problems. Problems. Freaked me out a little bit. I pulled the slide out so I can get the kitchen all open. I'll show you inside here. It's running now, you hear that? It's running. It turns off and then it runs for a bit and then it turns off. So that slide is not pushed out right now. I just pushed out the kitchen slide here so that I could access this a little bit more because it was freaking me out that this thing wasn't turning on. But you heard it running there. Runs for a bit, turns off, runs for a bit, turns off. So it should be good. <laughs> Freak me out. Freak me out, man. Don't need this right now. My dad's on his way over here right now because he's going to take a look at it and help me try to figure out why it wasn't turning on. I turned it from propane back to electric and then it just started running on its own. So I guess that's how it's supposed to be. I don't know. Whew! Anxiety. We have a renter coming in a couple of days. We gotta make sure this thing works. So you heard it. It's running. It's working. Well, emergency services arrived. <laughs> Dad to the rescue. Almost midnight after our call. It is gonna be expensive. Oh yeah, you're, you're just, just wait. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had to get me an energizer drink just, just to make it here. You know? <laughs> they live just around the corner too. Yeah, that's not far. No, but, no big deal. Time right for it. It should kick on again very soon. So dad was explaining to me like these fridges are a little bit different. It's not a compressor style fridge that you have in your house. It's a little bit of a different fridge. It takes 24 hours to cool down. And you're saying, well, this fins in the, there it is. See, it's working. There's fins inside the fridge that cool off the fridge and that takes so long to cool the fridge off. But on the other side of the fins, they get really warm. And that fan is cooling the back of those fins. But they didn't kick on right away because the fins weren't hot enough in the back yet. So I'm just a moron. <laughs> yeah, it, it works. So I didn't know that, you know, fridges and RV was that kind of, it's a cooler fridge. It's, uh, yeah. it's not a compressor fridge. And At least like, this one. Maybe the fancier RVs have a compressor fridge. Uh, I think ours has that, uh, an RV, like our Goose Neck Trailer. Yeah. That has, I think that has a compressor fridge. Oh, okay. So this one's a little different. So I didn't know how the fridge worked. Uh, Dad had to come in, educate me. He actually didn't do anything. He just showed up and it was already working and he explained to me why it wasn't before and why it is now. It's, it's quiet for a while. <laughs> Plug these coolers in, cooler fridge, and then after a while the fan will come off. Just so the, uh, the back of part of the cooler doesn't get too hot. Makes sense. And then it circulates the air and it makes the air in the fridge nice and cool. <sighs> You see, it'd be different if it was just us taking it out. Not a big deal, whatever. We'll figure it out if the fridge isn't working. But we have renters coming the day after tomorrow to take this thing out. And I'm not gonna be back. I'm going, well, I might be back. I'm going on a short trip. We're going to Yorkton and back. So I, I might be back when they pick it up, but 
most likely, uh, you know, Britt, my mom, or someone else will be here uh, to go over the pre-inspection with them. And I didn't want them to show up and have a warm fridge and no fridge for the entire trip. Because what do we do then? What do we, I'd have to let them know now and maybe they'd rebook with someone else. We'd lose the rental or we'd have to give a big discount because the fridge isn't working. That's kind of an important part. Yeah, that, yeah on camping, that's one thing you want to work for sure. So this is very and new I'm, to I'm us. I'm not going to be here either. Like by, by that time, I'll be, I'm going to Saskatoon, uh, behind Edmonton, and then U.S. from there. This, that's what I was told oh. anyway. Okay, so there's no help at all after this. So we'll wait one more time. It's going to cycle on one more time. But I was just panicking, and uh, it's because we're, we're new to this, this whole rental thing. And uh, I want to make sure that we create good impressions right off the bat with all of our renters. There it is again. And I want to make sure that we get, uh, you know, we get good, a good customer base that they want to come back and rent from us again. If they tell their friends like, hey, you guys don't buy a camper, just rent from these guys. I'm a little bit uh, full of anxiety, but I have a trailer. You, you can check inside the fridge now, Ray, it should start cooling off inside the fridge. I mean, it's not yeah. going to be the temperature where you want it to be, but it should start. Okay. Yeah, oh, here, let's, let's go and uh, let's go and check. I'm a little nervous opening it because I don't want it to stop working now, but if it's going to stop working, it should start working now. Stop working now while Dad's here and he can give me a hand because uh, I need his brain power because I haven't worked with these things before and he has. Okay, so uh, we'll put our hand inside the freezer here. Yes, it's definitely started to cool down already. Yeah. Oh yeah, I can feel that. That's getting cold. Right on. That's okay. That, that is working normal. Okay. We'll open up the fridge. Nice blue lighting, my favorite. And in here, we won't feel this as much because this takes 24 hours to cool down. That's right. Yeah, the, the freezer you want to you know, notice first. Then. Okay. The freezer is definitely cool. Definitely cooling down. Okay. Crisis averted. Thanks for coming out, Deb. Oh, you're quite welcome. Middle of the night. Oh, well, we were just lazy on the living room, we both watching on whatever we could find on, on our cell phones and just, I just put my, my headset on, I just barely turned it on, put it on my head, and I looked at the screen, and your icon came up, your profile icon came up, the fridge isn't working! Uh oh! <laughs> yeah, okay, well the problem's fixed, that uh, fan will come on one more time yet. And then we'll uh, I'll head out. I gotta go pick up my trailer. I have to be there before 1 a.m. and it's already past 10 o'clock. So I'll, I'll still have time. I'll be fine. I can sleep fine. All right. And then you <laughs> bring it here uh, and then from here, or you just no, take it to the yard. I'm gonna sleep in Winnipeg. Uh, yeah, might as well pick up in Winnipeg. There. Yeah. There it is. Oh yeah. Okay. And we're good. Let's fold these things there. back up here. I'm gonna need two hands for this. I can't believe I did that. Yeah, what a panicking thinking that the fridge isn't working. Oh, it's working just fine. I just don't know how it works. That's all. Oh! Sometimes this brain of mine, you know, it just gets the better of me. It's just, nah, nah. So we're back in old blue. Let's forget about that right now. That is in the capable hands of Britt, my wife now. My job now is to go and pick up this trailer. We gotta get our load in the morning. No more distractions. No more distractions. No more distractions. It's uh, <laughs> it's almost 11 o'clock now. I have two hours. It only takes an hour to get there, but I'm cutting it way closer than I wanted to. Way closer than I wanted to. Let's just get my computer all set up in the back. I just, just want to get make sure uh, my computer is safe here. I don't want my computer falling or breaking. I'd rather that not happen. Thank you very much. I already lost a GoPro this week. No idea where it went. No idea. I think it got stolen, honestly. Because I had the GoPro with us because I was thinking of vlogging while I was at home this week. And we were going to Superstore, which is like a Canadian Walmart, right? We're gonna go in the Superstore, but I left it in the car. I was like, oh, it'll be fine, I'll get it later. I think we forgot to lock the doors of the car. I think, I think I forgot. I think someone stole my GoPro. Do you have my GoPro? Who are you? 
Why'd you take my GoPro? I was a Hero 8. So I already bought a new one. Uh, it's another Hero 8. It'll be here later this week. But until then, we have this Sony camera. Thank goodness we got the Sony camera. It's my best camera. But it's not really an action camera, so I can't do as many road shots, and I can't strap this one to my head. Let's go get our trailer, okay? All right, we got our rental, and we're at Flying J and Headingley. It's late, late, late. Pretty much a whole vlog about the camper again, guys, eh? Sorry about that. I know a lot of you want to see this stuff. Well, let me tell you something. Tomorrow, this is all you're going to see. Trucking. I got this rental triaxle step deck behind me now. We were all out of our own triaxle steps. I believe a lot of them are in for uh, some warranty work right now. I think that's what's going on. So anyways, this thing's in pretty good shape. Happy with it. Now, I did request to go south so that I could take Old Blue through Blue Beacon or the North Star Truck Wash in Fargo. Get all this grime off of it. Unfortunately, we're not going south this week. Doing three runs to Yorkton, Saskatchewan and back. Which is a pretty much, pretty much a full day there and back. I think it's about 500 miles. Not quite a full day, but... Uh, it'll fill up my my week here. So I have three days left in this week. We got Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Today was Tuesday when I'm filming this, just to give you an idea of what time of the week I'm filming this on. So tomorrow we go pick up our load of concrete. Uh, I think they're concrete jersey barriers or something to do something with concrete. We're gonna throw them on here. They're gonna be heavy. That's why we needed the triaxle. Uh, load them up. Head over to York and probably unload that first thing the next morning and then uh, rush back here to try to get loaded the same day. Rush back there to get loaded the following morning and then rush back here to get loaded. That's the idea. But I'm, I'm kind of sad that I'm not gonna be able to get this grime off my truck, because look at this, this is like, it's so sad to see old blue in this state. Like, oh, and I, I washed it and I could not, for the life of me, Get this grime off of here. I mean, it will come off, you see here? Like, it will come off, but it's stuck on there really good. It's awful, look at that. All my polish. That one too. It'll clean off, I just need to... I hope I won't have to acid wash it. I really, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Definitely need some love and attention. I know you can tell by the tone of my voice <laughs> that I'm not just tired right now. I'm, not, I'm very, I'm very sad about how, uh, how dirty old blue got, but I'm not gonna let myself get down too much. It's okay, we'll fix it, we'll get it cleaned. We'll do our best. And uh, I'm only budgeting to polish it once a year. So, uh, it shouldn't, it's not due for another polish until next spring. So we're gonna have to, so we're gonna have to do some special hard work bringing that shine back. Uh, we'll get it there, we'll do it. This is gonna take, I don't know, the trip up north wasn't worth all the effort. I don't think, for me. It paid really good, but. Not with a polished truck. That's not somewhere you take a polished truck unless you don't care about your polish. And I care about mine, so. <sighs> At least I got those dollars, right? I went to the end of that road, I got those dollars. They're mine now. They're mine. So there is, I did get something for it. <laughs> I'm not really, I'm not complaining. It's my choice. I went down there and uh, of my own complete free will. No one forced me to. I didn't know, uh, I didn't know. <laughs> All learning experiences today. Oh, I learned about the RV fridge. Learned that, uh, you know, some dirt doesn't come off so easy off of polished aluminum. That's what I mean. I've been driving 17 years now. You believe that? <laughs> oh, well, I'm not that old, but I started really early. I started driving truck when I was 18 here in Canada, uh, here in Manitoba. So I've been driving ever since. I've been doing this long haul stuff here or at the same place for 12 years now. So I am what you might call experienced. 
But I still learn new things every day and that's why this job is so awesome. There's always something new to learn. That's what's so great about life. Every day is a new learning experience. You just gotta learn from your mistakes and try not to repeat them. Thanks for watching today, everybody. We're gonna shut down. We're at Flying J Headingly, Manitoba, west of Winnipeg. We'll pick up our load tomorrow and I'll talk to you then. It'll be a day full of trucking.